Gary Gensler, the new head of the SEC, previously taught classes about blockchain and other financial technology at MIT. In fact, his classes are available for free here on YouTube. He has said to the press that he sees cryptocurrencies as a speculative store of value and that he believes that the SEC should be technologically neutral when it comes to innovation in markets. He has said that many crypto coins trade like financial assets and can be considered financial securities and should thus fall under the purview of the SEC. He has spoken in the past about social media's influence on financial markets saying that we need to update and freshen our rules to ensure that, while every individual has First Amendment rights to speak, that they're not misleading the public or manipulating the markets. For now, though, the SEC's official position is that cryptocurrencies are not securities and thus don't fall under its jurisdiction. In the UK, the FCA recently came out with a ruling that the crypto exchange Binance cannot conduct any regulated activity in the UK. In addition, they posted a warning on their website that if you invest in crypto assets, you will not have access to the financial ombudsman service or the financial services compensation scheme if things go wrong. Similarly, in Europe, most crypto assets fall outside EU financial services legislation and outside investor protection rules. Many viewers might think that crypto is not a big deal, just a flash in the pan. But according to Robinhood's IPO filings, 17% of last quarter's revenues came from cryptocurrency transactions. So what protections are in place right now for those who put their money in crypto assets? Well, when it comes to consumer protections, the quick answer is that there aren't any. Regulators and policymakers are still struggling to define what these products are, and the pace of development in the crypto industry has just outstripped regulators' ability to respond. Most of the financial rules introduced in the past decade relate to issues unearthed in the 2008 financial crisis. There is some very limited regulation in place right now. Cryptocurrency brokerages in the US are licensed as money transmitters and don't carry the same protections as traditional brokers or asset managers. Unlike bank deposits, money stored in crypto accounts is not covered by FDIC insurance. In the UK, companies that provide crypto trading or custody must register with the regulator for anti-money laundering oversight. More than 50 companies have withdrawn applications with the FCA to operate registered cryptocurrency businesses in Britain after the watchdog pushed back over low standards. Even if a crypto asset business is registered with us, we're not responsible for making sure that they protect your assets, the FCA has said. So what happens if a regulator bans a brokerage that you deal with? Well, the FCA's Binance decision seems maybe more symbolic than anything else right now. British consumers can still access the website, but they now see a warning from the FCA saying that the exchange is not allowed to conduct regulated business in the UK. This isn't exactly prohibitive, as according to the FCA, only 4% of British crypto traders even use a UK exchange. US-based investors are barred from buying cryptocurrency derivatives unless the companies offering them are registered with the CFTC. But regulators are aware that investors use VPNs to get around these restrictions. What happens if your crypto password is lost or stolen? Well, crypto owners are responsible for looking after their unique private keys, which operate kind of like passwords. If they lose or forget this, it can't be recovered, so the crypto assets are lost forever. Even the most regulated exchanges like Coinbase don't cover investors who lose their password. Some estimates put forth that 20% of the supply of Bitcoins has been lost this way. Exchanges don't really offer much protection if someone hacks your account either and steals your holdings. The blockchain that holds the record of all transactions is so widely distributed that it's impossible to unwind a transaction and restore your funds, unlike in the case of credit card fraud. 
that complexity is part of the design of the system. So what happens if your exchange or broker goes bust? Once again, you don't get the protections you would get in traditional financial markets. In crypto, it might take a very long time to get any assets back, and the most likely outcome is that you'll get nothing back. For this reason, many crypto investors keep their assets in cold storage rather than on an exchange or with a broker. This is to be expected when the firms you're dealing with sit outside of protections offered by government-backed deposit insurance schemes. Finally, what happens if you're a victim of financial fraud? Well, financial fraud is dealt with by law enforcement in most countries. The police do investigate cyber crimes and the links between crypto and illicit activity, but their ability to recover stolen cryptocurrencies can be limited. The SEC have gone after numerous Ponzi schemes in the crypto space. In 2013, Andrew Calamari, the director of the SEC's New York regional office, said, fraudsters are not beyond the reach of the SEC just because they use Bitcoin or another virtual currency to mislead investors and violate the federal securities laws. Lori Shook, the director of the SEC's Office of Investor Education and Advocacy, says, that Ponzi scheme operators often claim to have a tie to new and emerging technology as a lure to potential victims. Investors should understand that regardless of the type of investment, a promise of high returns with little or no risk is a classic warning sign of fraud. So what about pump and dumps or rug pulls as they're often referred to in the crypto space? Pump and dump schemes are illegal and the SEC considers them securities fraud. The CFTC even offers a bounty of 10 to 30% of monetary sanctions for whistleblowers who turn in subjects planning pump and dump operations. While enforcement on this front has been very light, the fact that all transactions are permanently recorded on the blockchain means that investigators should be able to accurately piece together what happened when they get around to doing these investigations. We're starting to see regulators step in in these cases. On the 14th of July, the SEC fined a UK firm for failing to disclose the compensation it received from issuers of the digital asset securities it profiled. There would appear to be a huge issue with social media influencers touting crypto assets like this. I'm a Ding Dong fan, and that's why I'm all in. While the tout was fined in this case, it's worth noting that none of the people who lost money in the pump and dump scheme got any of their money back. So once again, buyer beware. There are a lot of unregulated markets out there, things like the market for fine art, for classic cars, or other collectibles like stamps. In those markets, much like in crypto, market participants are usually aware that they have to be careful. Most of those transactions are covered by contract law, and usually buyers have reasonable knowledge of who they're dealing with. The crypto market, due to its anonymous nature, exposes investors to significantly more risk. Even if you can prove that someone ripped you off, that doesn't mean that your stolen assets can be recovered. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.